Hi, I'm Heidi from Garden Crossings and today I am going to take you for a quick little walk through the butterfly house to show you what we've been up to so far. It's going to be a little bit before those uh, caterpillars arrive, but we have to get this space prepped and ready. That way we've got the proper food source and nectar for them when they do um, get here. Obviously the caterpillars are going to feast off of the milkweed or Escalapius, but once those caterpillars turn into butterflies, we have to have the beautiful flowers and nectar for them. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's currently kind of blooming and showing a little bit of interest in the butterfly house today. So it was just planted up last week with all of our annuals. Uh, the perennials, they've kind of emerged on their own uh, because this is a slightly warmer area here being protected from the outdoors. So when we're planting the butterfly house up, we make sure that we're having a lot of plants that would be really great pollinator plants for the butterfly house. Also, we make sure that we have it really full of Asclepias or milkweed because that is the host plant for the monarch caterpillars that we will be bringing in here, hopefully the end of April. We'll have to see when they're ready and as soon as they're ready, they'll send them out to us. So you can see some of the larger clumps. Those are the perennials and then the annuals. Like I said, they were just planted. Like for example, here's a little petunia. So this will have to get all big and filled out nicely, but hopefully in a month, by the time those caterpillars arrive, we'll see quite a bit uh, of addi additional growth in this area, just due to the temperatures getting continually warmer and more sunshine, which will help make all these plants grow just a little bit better. There you can see there's a few more little petunias in here. We've got the new persimmon. And then we also did a lot of the lobularia, white night, and violet night, and that really creates really a beautiful border along this pathway. Got a large butterfly bush there. That's the Pugster series butterfly bush. Those are always so pretty when they're in bloom and the butterflies really do enjoy them. Along the back wall there, we have some hollyhock, and those are really cool, just giving a little bit of height up the back of the greenhouse once they get taller and send out the flowers. In the middle of the greenhouse pathway, we have this beautiful weeping cherry tree, which is now just about past its prime. There's a few little flowers. They're kind of all spent at this point, but this was really pretty before the leaves came on. It was full of these really pretty pink flowers that just kind of showered and drooped down on this plant. In the center, we planted the Vista Jazzberry, which we did this last year as well and they were just fabulous and the color was just so vibrant. Uh, up along the tree, we planted the Salvia Rock and Blue Suede Shoes just to give a little bit of height. We'll see how they do. Last year we used Lantana in that place and the Jazzberry totally took over the Lantana. So hopefully those Rock and Blue Suede Shoes will be tall enough that we'll be able to see them poke through the petunias at the end of the summer. A few more annuals here. We did a lot of the new petunias. So we've got the Vista, uh, Mini Vista Scarlet. We did the Mini Vista Midnight. And then we have Mini Vista Yellow in here as well. The Aquapots are planted up now. So we put, let's go take a closer look here. So here we have some Petunias, Begonias, some Euphorbia. Um, some Sun Patients and Coleus. So that's going to look really pretty. It's very flat right now, but by the end of the summer, I'm guessing this will be uh, upwards of about two foot tall, especially once that coleus really fills in. So in creating the butterfly house, we had to be very conscious of the plants that we put in it to make for sure that we had the proper host plants and pollinator plants for the butterflies that we're introducing. Right now, our primary introduction is the monarch butterfly. So we're really heavily concentrating on Escalapius or milkweed in here. Uh, but we also wanted to have host plants for the swallowtails uh, in case if we decide we wanna bring some of those into the butterfly house as well. We have some dill and some fennel uh, over here. These actually came back from last year, which we were pleasantly surprised about. So we've got kind of a head start there. This is, fe uh, this is fennel which is for the black swallowtails. We have this beautiful lilac blooming. This is the Centera double blue lilac. It's a gorgeous specimen here. It's about four foot tall and four foot wide. And check out these beautiful fragrant blooms. They're nice double 
florets. So if we go in closer, you can see how each little flower has its outer petals and then inner petals as well. Super fragrant and a very lovely color. Um, you can see there's a little bit of different variation of color depending on if the blooms are just opening. They're a little bit di uh, darker, maybe a little bit pinker. And then as the flowers open up more, they lighten up to more of a light lavender color. But this is such a beautiful fragrant addition. And it gives us early season color here in the butterfly house. As we cross over the aisle, we've got a lot of butterfly bush over here that are quite big. Uh, but a few things to really point out are this Caryopteris Sunshine Blue Chew. So when we planted in here, we had to also think about making sure we had plants that would open in the fall or late in the season. And Caryopteris is a late season bloomer. So this provides the pollen for the pollen and nectar for the butterflies later on in the season. Last year we had butterflies from May until October. Uh, in October we let them go uh, because we knew it was going to get too cold and we just we didn't want to keep this butterfly house going all winter long. So we let them go so they had plenty of time to head down to Mexico or wherever they were headed to. This beautiful plant, this is a Spirea double play candy corn. Check out that beautiful foliage. That nice bright yellow with the coppery orange tips. This gets nice pink flowers on it when it starts to bloom. Uh, but again, a great splash of color for this early season in the garden. We've got mahogany monster heuchera there, or corabels, great big leaves. It gets nice white flowers on it. And really, a, this was evergreen all winter here in the, in the greenhouse. It's just a gorgeous plant, especially paired there with that candy corn spirea. Here is another butterfly bush, and I'm gonna actually go in and take a closer look here with you. So you'll see all these little white sachets just everywhere throughout the butterfly house. And those are the biologicals that we're using to help their good bugs to combat bad bugs. So they help with spider mite and thrip. We also, in addition to those sachets, we sprinkle onto the plants, especially ones that sometimes can be more problematic We'll sprinkle onto them more of the good bugs, and that's what you're seeing here. So as this plant continues to grow, you won't see the little pieces all over it because they'll get buried. Uh, but we definitely want to bring the good bugs to the plants that need a little bit more help. So now this environment here is super hot and super humid, so it's kind of a breeding ground sometimes for some of the different insects and such. Uh, but being that we have the butterflies and caterpillars in here, we cannot use anything in the line of sprays because that will kill our butterflies and our caterpillars. So everything we do in here has to be very natural and sometimes it can be tricky, but we're, we have our bug people that help us understand what the best biologicals are to use to help combat whatever the current issue might be in the butterfly house. Some of the plants we have planted are coneflowers and phlox and hollyhocks, butterfly bush, allium, agastache, petunias, salvia, pentas, zinnias, lantana, verbena, all kinds of great plants that have great flowers for the butterflies to enjoy. There's some nepeta over there. Uh, also too being that we're you know, in this indoors greenhouse, we have to make sure we have some puddling stations for those butterflies. So that's why you're seeing some little fountains and bird baths here and there, is because that way it provides puddling areas for those butterflies to go to get water if they need water. Here's another aquapot we have planted up here. This one has lantana and lobularia, some coleus, and then some superbells. So this one too will be quite a tall planter once it fills out. And it's, it's just really exciting to see like what it looks like now and then checking it out again in another couple months to see what it looks like later. So really I think the butterfly house is just a nice way to get introduced to spring just a little bit earlier being that it's in a protected area. Everything just wakes up about a month and a half to two months sooner than what it would if we were outdoors. So it's also like a walking catalog kind of where people can walk through this house and see things in bloom much before they even have a desire to go outside and walk through the gardens outside 
or even at their own homes. So if you're looking for something to do, you can always stop out to us here at Garden Crossings in Zeeland, Michigan, and check out the butterfly house, the progress of the plants, and also the progress of the butterflies once we get them in. Thank you for watching. I'm Heidi from Garden Crossings.